Hello, I'm David Breeden. I'm the senior minister at First Unitarian Society of Minneapolis, a historically humanist congregation. And this is Coffee and Wisdom. When we look a little bit about uh, where humanism and free thought have been, where it is today and where it's going, and also just a consideration of the religious, uh, spiritual, philosophical atmosphere in American culture. This week, I've been looking at humanist commitments, and this idea comes from the Oxford Handbook of Humanism and a particular article called, What Does It Mean to Practice Humanism? by Dr. James Croft, who is the ethical culture leader in St. Louis, Missouri. His question basically is, you know, what do we do? Because yes, we know that humanism has a philosophy and, and ethics. These are fairly abstract things. How does that um, really meet the road with the, uh, how does how do we do that? And and I've been looking a little bit at the past at some people who have uh, really lived up to these ideas. And uh, in the past, it looks much different because these people were such leaders, thought leaders from their time period. Uh, but uh, that's what we're doing today. We just don't know uh, how it's going to look in the future. Uh, but um, Dr. Croft mentions uh, the humanist commitments. Uh, he says there are six. The epistemic commitment, that is how we believe uh, meaning works. The naturalist commitment, that is that we believe that science and uh, reason are very good ways to figure out what's actually going on around us. The ethical commitment, the self-actualization commitment, social commitment, and the justice commitment. Now, today I want to look at a particular uh, guy, and uh, we'll get to uh, him in just a moment there with his dogs. I do want to remind you that yesterday, this is a bit of a review, we were talking about the only descendant of a founding father, American founding father, to actively participate in freeing enslaved people. The only one. Now, again, how does someone get there? Uh, this is a little quote. Moncure Conway seemed ready to have his worldview deconstructed wrote Dana Littlepage Smith um, in a Quaker publication about Mr. Conway. Uh, remember, Mr. Conway began as a, a conventional Methodist growing up in Virginia, uh, becomes a Unitarian when he moves to Massachusetts, and eventually leaves the country uh, and as kind of hopeless and moves to England um, and there becomes an ethical culture leader, a free thinker, and a humanist. Uh, today, I want to talk about another Brit, and this is Henry Stephen Salt, 1851 to eight, uh, 1939. He's a British humanitarian, and he's the first person uh, to put together the word animal and rights. Um, he's considered the grandfather of animal rights. Uh, I have talked in the past about Peter Singer, a contemporary philosopher and Australian humanist, uh, who really has brought that to the forefront in the last few years as a contemporary. Um, but um, Dr. Singer uh, uh, definitely credits uh, Mr. Salt with uh, the grandfather role in creating this animal rights movement. Um, and just in case you're wondering, how does he feel about that? This is one of the quotes from his last book, I shall die as I have lived, rationalist, socialist, pacifist, and humanitarian, he said. His first publication was something that put those two words together, animals and rights, considered in relation to social progress. And the publication date there is 1894. Also, you notice there's an American uh, who wrote an essay, uh, a doctor who wrote an essay about vivisection in America. Again, animal cruelty, animal rights, and, and how to deal with uh, these new issues and to think about them. Uh, here's a quote, a uh, very famous quote from the book Animal Rights. If we are ever going to do justice to the lower races, and he's not talking about thinking about any human beings as a lower race, he's talking about other sentient beings, animals. We must get rid of the antiquated notion of a great gulf fix between them and mankind and must recognize the common bond of humanity that unites all living things in one universal brotherhood. Yes, he would use non-sexist language these days, but you get the idea of what he's talking about. He's saying that we all sentient beings are in this family on earth, all with equal rights, and we must respect those rights uh, of the dog, the cow, the cat, etc., just as much as we, we would uh, respect human rights. 
which yes, he believes being a pacifist that people do have rights and don't deserve to be killed. So uh, he's also famous for introducing Gandhi to the work of both Thoreau and to ethical vegetarianism. There is a difference in vegetarianism. In Hinduism, it is a religious imperative for many to be vegetarian. Ethical vegetarianism is about not killing animals because they are sentient beings. So there is a subtle difference there. Also, you probably know that Gandhi and his whole idea of civil disobedience uh, comes out of Thoreau, so a very pivotal uh, person uh, in the life of Gandhi and eventually to the freedom of India. This, he, uh, Mr. Saul did write a life of Henry David Thoreau, by the way. Um, he wrote 40 books uh, in his lifetime. Uh, his his uh, autobiography is called 70 Years Among the Savages. Again, how did he feel about that? He later wrote another book on vegetarianism, The Logic of Vegetarianism. And his last book in 1935 was called The Creed of Kinship, The Creed of Kinship, in which he talks about Number one, uh, the free thinking thought, the naturalistic thought that we, we don't know about any gods out there. That's not our problem. We need to figure out how to deal with human problems here. And one of the ways to do that is to have an entire human family and then a sentient being family. That's the creed of kinship that he's talking about. And a, a vast vision of all sentient beings being treated with the same kind of rights as humanity. So 1935 was that book. Um, it's sadly out of print at this point, uh, though, um, uh, again, Dr. Singer, the contemporary philosopher on animal rights, um, has uh, uh, written extensively about this book uh, and uh, how, how very, very prescient it was. Again, commitments to uh, uh, how we humanists live. I'm going to be talking about that on Sunday Assembly at 10.30 a.m. Central Time this week. We'll be celebrating the equinox coming up. And also, I'll be talking about the concept of hope and how that uh, comes into ideas of, of uh of humanism. As you can see, Mr. Salt, you know, did he even have any hope of animal rights in 1895? Well, you just have to work on it and go forward. And that's kind of the idea. Uh, you can uh, uh, see uh, all the things that are going on at our humanist congregation on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you can help us out uh, bringing the voice of humanism out to the world by going to firstunitarian.org slash donate or to PayPal. Thanks a lot. And I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you.